Alright guys, so uh, this is a quick tutorial on uh, the Prime X370 Pro. That's a uh, SOC voltage. I like running at 1.0. Let me pull these out. One handed here, so bear with me. And there's my uh, V core. So I'm going to show you the bio settings I use to get these voltages. I'll move this over here for now. The SOC isn't as much of a problem as V core was to get where I wanted it. So let's uh, shut this flash off for a second. So I hate the mouse in this UFI. So in my settings right here, obviously, you know, 3200 RAM, 4 gig. Um, let me show you the BIOS first. This is, uh, BIOS is this. This is 0511. So, this is the most stable BIOS I've found so far. Um, other than some weird shutdowns I was having, which is probably temp related, which I did something you probably should not do, but I just don't care. I do things differently. I threw CPU temperature on ignore just for now for testing to see if it would change anything. So anyway, uh, 0511. Here's the voltage page. These are my voltages. These are my set voltages. Do you notice? Um, we got 1.0125 on the SOC. That's what I need. It's just easier to compensate this way. I've already tried compensating with LLC. It's easier to compensate this way. 1.0125 at my LLC settings will get you one volt measured. And 1.40 volt set for the V-Core at my settings, it's, it holds pretty good. It's like 1.39 idle. So, let me show you the uh, DigiVRM settings. Level 5 for V-Core. I'm just running, I mean, we're not LN2 overclocking. I don't need to go over the current capacity or anything. Switching frequency, I'll leave it alone. I found before, I haven't played with this board that much, but I found on another the little B, Prime B350, I was able to do better with the lower switching frequency. So it's probably low already. Um, the Spectrum Off, you're overclocking T-Probe, optimized. Um, I just like those settings. It, it's better for the board for 24-7 use. Um, so level 3 on the SOC for low line calibration. And once again, optimized. It's just the way I like to run for like, if you're doing like 24-7 use, if you're overclocking like uh, on LN2, screw with that stuff. Put it on extreme. But for, for air 24-7 users, you really don't need to go to that. It says extreme. Are you, you're on air, so I mean, it is what it is. So those are the tabs, and I'm gonna run into Windows real quick and show you what the voltages get me under Prime 95. So exit out of here real quick. F10. You have not made any changes. All right, so as you can see, you know, I'm idling in Windows. 
I've got a manual overclock. I do not have C O C and Q on. And Asus has this thing called CPB Core Performance Boost, which I don't know bumps the clocks up like 200 megahertz. I have that off. Everything else is left alone. And his CPU Z. And as you can see, the voltage on CPU Z, I gotta do this. As you can see, the voltage on CPU Z is when within a close correlation with my DMM. But all that changes once I put it under load. So, sorry for the flash. It's the only way I can get both of them to read up for you. So, just blend test right now. And as you can see, it jumped up to 1.40. Cascade tile. And the most I've seen this jump up to before I started making the video was uh, 1.41. So 1.39 to 1.41. That's what I like. I mean, I set a voltage. And it stays within that range, you know, has a little fluctuation, a little bit of droop here and there. I don't mind that, but I don't like the voltage doing what that is saying it's doing. That is just ridiculously crazy. And obviously, the software is completely off. It's not even close. I mean, look at it. So, you guys out there that like software you can trust software I'm gonna trust my DMM I don't know what else to tell you um, I've always trusted my DMM over software I'm not a big fan of software I don't even have software installed in here except for CPU Z I'd have no monitoring software whatsoever I don't even care what the temps are I'm an overclocker if something gets hot I cool it down that's it so I don't use temp mon I mean not to mention you know I run benchmarks. Anything I install in the system slows my system down. So I want bare minimum installed. You know, I've got all my benchmarks in here, and that's about it. I got Core Temp installed in here right now, but that was just because I was helping out the coolest on on Extreme Systems, who sets it up. I did some dumps for him, so he, he's working on the program right now to get an accurate software for the guys that care about temps. Once again, like I said, I don't care about temps. I don't have any temp monitoring software on here. Actually, I'm lying. Hold on. I'll pull up a uh, temp software for you. This is the only temp software I have, and it's only because it's part of the program that allows me to overclock. As soon as I find something that is lower overhead, like we used to have K10 stat, I won't even use this anymore. So, there's my temps right now. As you can see, that's probably why I was having shutdowns, you know, at like 1.475 volts. I'm already at 87. I think normally it shuts off around 95 or something, but maybe it shuts off at 105. I don't know. There's conflicting information across the net. But I was shutting down earlier at 1.475 volts. Now I'm at 1.4. Anyway, all right, that about sums it up. I hope this is a uh, useful info to anybody with an Asus uh, X370 Pro. Um, I like the board. I was having trouble trouble with stability. I think this is why, because I was not running at the voltage that I thought I was running, and I was scared to run voltage because. CPU Z was reporting some really crazy volts, and I don't like to run these chips, you know, up to 1.5. So, let's see if I can get some stability out of this board now, and uh, hopefully, this info was helpful. See you next time.